Hey everyone, it's Ashley with Southern Sewing Company. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the beginner quilting series and you are here for part three. Today we're gonna to talk about batting, backing, and basting. We're gonna learn a little bit more about batting. I'm gonna show you how to piece together the quilt backing and then how to baste your quilt. If this is your first week joining us, check the description box below for all of the posts that have already been in this series. So you can kind of catch up. If you're new here, we're working together to make a quilt from start to finish. If you are excited to get started, just stay tuned. Check out the links in the description box below because I have left some of my favorite brands of quilt batting that you might wanna try. In my blog post this week, you're gonna get a pretty in-depth look at the different types of batting, and you might be able to make a little bit of an educated guess as to which batting you might wanna use for your quilt. First, we're gonna talk about the different quilt batting terms that you're gonna see as you are searching for different types of quilt batting. First thing you're gonna see is loft. Loft is the thickness of your quilt batting. There's low loft, which is a thinner batting, and then there's high loft that's a thicker batting. Needle punched is mechanically felted together with hundreds of tiny needles. So the benefits of the needle punched batting is it creates a dense, compact batting with a lower loft, which makes it less fluffy, but also more stable. So it's actually more beneficial for machine quilting. Scrim is the thin stabilizer added to the batting to keep it from losing its shape. You're typically gonna see this with all needle punched batting. Also see fusible batting, which means it's got an adhesive that is heat activated on both sides. So you actually base your quilt together with your iron instead of basing spray or pins. So this is an example of polyester batting and I actually use this a lot because it's a really great option if you want to show off your quilting and it typically is because it comes with a pretty high loft. You can see how thick this is compared to a batting like this that's pretty thin. It also doesn't shrink so it eliminates the risk of the quilt wrinkling as cotton batting does. I don't have any 100% cotton batting on hand. I don't have any because I've used it all. <laughs> cotton batting, it's soft and it's warm and it has that typical quilt look, kind of like an antique quilt that you would see that has that kind of all over wrinkled look. Um, cotton batting also comes in white, which is something I use very regularly. I make a lot of white baby quilts. Next, we're gonna talk about a cotton poly blend. This is the Hobbs Heirloom. We talk about a cotton and a poly blend. It usually means there's about 80% cotton and 20% polyester, made into the quilt batting. So as you can see, this has a pretty low loft and this is typically used among long arbors. This type of batting has a lot of breathability like cotton and it wrinkles less due to the polyester fibers that are in it. Last batting that we're gonna talk about is wool and this is something that I do not have on hand. It's not something that I use regularly, but wool is a natural insulator. It keeps you warm in the winter and cool during the summer. It's a good option if you'd like a high loft natural fiber. So now that we've talked about the different types of batting and the different terminology that you might see while shopping for batting, two ways that you can buy it. You can either buy it from a roll like this that's pre-packaged and it has the measurements on it. So this is a king size batting. It's 120 inches by 120 inches. These come in crib size, craft size, twin, any size that you would need. So these are really convenient and I definitely recommend these for a beginner because there's no guesswork. You don't have to, you don't have to know your yardage. You can just, Pick the size that's a little bit bigger than your quilt top. Second way you can buy it or buy the yard. So in a quilt store, you will see rolls of batting and you would take this to the counter just like you would fabric, tell them how many yards you need and then go from there. Most of the time, quilt batting like this is about 90 inches. If you need more batting than that, I would recommend going with a bag like this that's 120 inches. Um, however, there are different widths of the batting. When we talk about quilt batting and we make our quilt sandwich, we need our quilt top to be one size. We need our quilt batting to be two inches bigger on each side around. So typically when I'm doing a quilt pattern, I look and see what size my quilt top is and then I buy the next size up in a pre-packaged batting bag. I think that's the easiest than trying to get it off the roll. So a little honest disclaimer, I'm gonna pull back the curtain here a little bit and be 100% honest. When I first started quilting, I knew nothing about batting. I also didn't want to go look. So I went on Amazon and did a quick search for quilt batting. And I basically picked the first thing that came up um, within the size guidance that I needed. 
and I'm pretty sure what I got was like an 80-20 blend um, or is 100% cotton. One of the two is really low loft, but at the end of the day, I didn't know the difference. My quilt turned out beautiful, and from then on, I haven't really been super picky about quilt batting. The only thing that I have noticed is when using polyester batting versus you know an 80-20 cotton poly blend, my quilting does stick out a lot more in this. The quilt's a lot more puffy, and with the cotton poly blend or 100% cotton, my quilt just kind of is a little more cuddly. So that's kind of the main difference that I kind of want to express to you is don't stress out about batting. It's not going to be the end of the world. Just pick what you think. If you don't know, just guess it's going to be fine. Now we're going to move on to our quilt backing and I'm going to show you how to put our quilt backing together, which is very exciting because we are one step closer to finishing our quilt, getting it quilted, getting it bound and being finished with our quilt. So stay tuned. So this cut of fabric is fresh from the fabric store. I have not ironed it, I haven't unfolded it, and don't do either of these. I'm about to save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you an easy way to put together a quilt backing. If you have two cuts of fabric, one for binding and one for backing, just skip this part and you already have your binding cut out so you don't need that yet. If you cut one continuous fabric cut with your backing and your binding, you're gonna go ahead and cut your binding strips first before you make your backing. So we're gonna cut five two and a quarter inch strips from our continuous yardage, and we're gonna put those to the side. We're not gonna worry about how to sew binding right now. I just needed that fabric off of our backing fabric. So what we're gonna do, this is three whole yards of fabric, right? It's already folded in half from salvage to salvage, just like it comes off the bolt. I'm gonna fold it in half hot dog style. <laughs> so from the top to the bottom, I am making sure to line up my two bottom edges here. So that my fabric is in one nice long fold. So as you can see, these edges are together. All of my folded edges are aligned and it comes to a point at the end. Okay. Our three yards have been folded in half, so now we have basically two 1.5 yard cuts, right? We just created this fold over here. We're gonna cut this. Okay, you're gonna have to trust me here. I'm gonna lay it on my table and smooth it out so I don't feel any major wrinkles. Next, I'm gonna find my fabric scissors. So I'm taking my fabric scissors in between where I just created this fold, and I'm just gonna cut upward. Sometimes it helps if you hold the end and you're just cutting along this fold. So now we have two cuts of fabric that are laying on top of each other. Don't separate them, don't unfold them. Let me show you what to do next. In a previous series, I recommended binding clips. These are my best friend. Anyways, so we now have a top piece of fabric, a second piece, a third piece, and a fourth piece, right? So we are going to clip our two inner pieces of fabric together, creating the seam right now that we are going to sew for our quilt backing. So pin all the way down these two pieces of fabric together. If your fabric has a pattern on it, you would see that these would be right sides together. So as you're pinning, your fabric should be right sides together at this point, but you can't really tell since I'm using a solid. But following these steps that I just showed you, in theory, your fabric should be right sides together. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew along our clipped seam using a one inch seam allowance. So this is a little bigger than the standard seam allowance that we usually use. And if you have questions as to where the one inch is on your sewing machine, I think mine goes up to a 5 eighths and that's the biggest. If I stick this ruler underneath my presser foot, I can see that the one inch mark is pretty close to this one quarter line over here. So as I sew, I'm just gonna use this as a reference point and I'm gonna sew using this. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you're just doing about a one inch seam allowance. So from here, it's okay to unfold your fabric. We already have the edges clipped together that we want to sew. 
So I'm gonna start at one end. I'm lining up to this number one right here, which is one inch on my machine. I'm gonna set my stitch length probably closer to two millimeters just to be safe. You don't want too big of stitches and risk these coming out later. I'm going to work my way down. And I'm gonna take my clips off as I go. You definitely wanna double check that your salvages are pretty close to lined up. They should be, but just double check. I'm gonna work my way down this entire this entire side and I will meet you back at the cutting board. We sewed this together with a one inch seam allowance. We're gonna actually trim it down to a half an inch. If you've done this for a while, you can definitely eyeball this. If you're not comfortable eyeballing it, then I'm going to take just a ruler and my rotary blade. So here's my seam right here. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line up the half inch mark along my sewn line. I'm gonna cut off some of the edges right here. And I'm gonna do this all the way down. So the hard part is definitely over with. You now have a quilt backing put together. And you could look at any quilt pattern and use the techniques that you're learning from this series and apply them to the quilt that you're making. However, if your quilt top is maybe 42 inches or under, I'm talking about a baby size quilt, you usually don't have to piece together the seams. If you don't like putting seams together, maybe let's start with baby quilts. <laughs> We're gonna flip our quilt backing over so that we can see our seam that we just created on the back. I like to press my quilt backing seam open. So I'm going to run my iron down the middle of this seam and I kind of like to use my left hand to open the seam as I go and then my right hand to smooth it down. But I just kind of run along this seam. I'll pull my backing down and then just kind of keep moving. But our seam is nice and flat. I'm gonna go ahead and iron my entire quilt backing now. So we skipped that step before just because it's, it's a little redundant. To take apart your quilt backing, iron it, fold it back together, <laughs> sew it together, unfold, you know, it's just it's a little repetitive. So instead, we're just doing all the ironing at once. I have five kids, I don't want to iron more than I have to. So now we're gonna iron our entire quilt backing. So our quilt backing is all put together. We've got our seam down the middle. So essentially we just sewed two long pieces of fabric together to make our quilt backing. Obviously this is gonna be a lot bigger than we need. Or next I'm gonna walk you through how to baste our quilt together. A quilt is essentially three parts put together. We have our quilt backing, we have our batting, and we have our quilt top. So those three things have to come together to make our quilt sandwich. How well our quilt sandwich is made makes a difference on how well we can quilt our quilt later. Next I'm going to show you how to make our quilt sandwich. So there are two ways that we can baste our quilt together. Number one is to spray baste. This is a, a temporary adhesive that doesn't stain, it's acid free that you spray onto your batting to stick to the quilt top. The second way is with quilting pins. And some people use straight pins. I like to use almost, safe. these are curved safety pins and these are two inches long. I'll put a link below to both of these in the description box. Basically, we need something to get our quilt sandwich to stick together. So I kind of do a combination of both of these. I don't like to use just spray adhesive because number one, this is expensive. So I'm gonna get to the floor and I'm gonna show you how I spray base my quilt together and then how I go back and use pins on top of that. First step is to lay our quilt backing out on a clean floor. Take the time now to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Next, we're going to take painter's tape and we're going to tape all around the perimeter of our backing fabric. Typically, I like to tape the bottom and then the top and then go back to do each side. But take care not to stretch the backing fabric too much. You just want it nice and flat. So here I'm using prepackaged batting. That was a lot bigger than the quilt that I needed. This is just what I had on hand. So I actually laid my quilt top on top of it and then cut my batting out to size. So this batting is about two inches bigger on each side than my quilt top. So I'm gonna lay this down on top of the backing fabric that I already have taped to the floor. I'm gonna fold my batting upwards, kind of in big sections. Next, I'm gonna fold the top of my batting down at the top of the quilt top, and I'm gonna spray the back of it with my basting spray. 
So keep your can about eight inches or so from the batting and you're gonna do a nice even coat all the way down. Then I'm gonna fold it back to my backing and I'm gonna smooth everything down in place. And usually when I'm smoothing, I start in the middle and work my way out. If you see any kind of wrinkles or where it's just not smoothing down, it's okay to lift and try again. Or if you think you need to add more spray, go ahead and do so. And then next, I'm gonna take my fold and I'm gonna fold it upward, spray underneath it, and place this down on my quilt backing. To be able to smooth this part down, I actually have to unfold a little bit more. So that's what you're seeing me do here. I'm gonna continue doing this until I have my entire quilt batting sprayed and then basted to my quilt backing. Don't be afraid to rebase the sides. This is typically where we get the least amount of spray. So definitely don't be afraid to go back and try the edges again, just to make sure they're all secure. Next, I'm gonna take my quilt top and fold it in the same fashion that I did the batting. I'm gonna start from the bottom and kind of fold it in big sections, moving upwards towards the top of the quilt. Once I've completed this step, I'm gonna place it about two inches under where my quilt batting is or where my quilt top is. Just as we did our quilt batting, I'm going to take the top of my quilt top, fold it down, and then spray the top of the batting. And then I'm gonna smooth my quilt top down, starting from the middle and working my way out. I'm really taking my time here to make sure I get all of the wrinkles and that everything is nice and smooth. I'm gonna take my quilt top, fold it up, and then spray the batting underneath and then lay my quilt top right on top of that. So remember you have to unfold it a little bit past that point just so you're able to smooth. But I'm just gonna keep working my way down my quilt top, unfolding a little, spraying, folding down, and then smoothing out until we have our entire quilt top finished. Next we're gonna talk about how to pin baste our quilt together. So as you can see, I already have a quilt sandwich formed on the floor with basting spray. However, if you are using pins, you're gonna use the same method to get the backing to stick down, and then you're going to smooth your batting and your quilt top down. So it's gonna look exactly the same. It's just not gonna have the basting spray in the middle. So you're just gonna use the same methods without the spray. Get everything nice and smooth on the floor, and then I'm gonna show you what to do next with your pins. As I mentioned before, these are two inch basting pins. I typically like to start in the middle of my quilt. I'm gonna open my basting pin, stick it all the way through and get maybe an inch to an inch and a half inch bite. And then I'm gonna clip it together. From here, I like to use my hand as a guide. So I'm gonna put my hand down so I know my next safety pin needs to go about right here. And I'm gonna safety pin in each direction about that far apart starting from the middle, outward. And as I mentioned before, your quilt sandwich should already be nice and smoothed out, but as you put your pins in, try to make sure that all of your layers are smooth together at this point. Definitely make sure not to stab yourself. Not that I've done that, you know, before. <laughs> These are fairly inexpensive. If you have a bigger quilt, I would definitely plan on investing in a few packs of these. Since I based my quilt with basting spray and then I use pins as kind of a backup, I don't typically pin so often. So I'm gonna take some of these out. This was more of an example. Of, so I'm gonna take some of these out and move them around the quilt and then I will meet you back here. The last step is to remove some of this excess fabric right here, which can be saved for another project. All quilt patterns, that you see will have some waste unless the pattern specifically says no waste pattern. So we're just working to build up your quilt stash at this point. We have our quilt top sandwich all put together. Join me next week for part four. We're gonna get our machine ready to quilt our quilt at home. So there's two ways to do this. You either need a walking foot or a free motion foot. And I'm gonna show you the supplies that you need and how to set your machine up for both of these. And then you can kind of choose your own adventure at this point. Do you want to use a walking foot to complete your quilt? Or do you want to try free motion quilting? I'm going to give you some tips for each and some things you can do to practice at home before you dive into your own quilt. See you next week.